G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and in this video we're going to be talking about constructing the human body for an illustration. Now when I say constructing, I essentially mean building it from the ground up or from the bones up. And we'll get to that in a moment, but first I want to talk about something I've spent a lot of time and work on. So if you're interested in checking out my recent released ebook called Draw with Jazza Easy Anatomy, very much to do with what we're going to be talking about today, but it goes into a lot more detail and it has a separate exercise book where you can print it up, do the exercises yourself and practice this stuff. And there's also an anatomy reference pack which has hundreds of poses of this male and female character here. So I just thought I'd get that out of the way. The link is on the screen and in the description. Go check it out if you're interested. Otherwise, let's get started. Now the topic of this video is specifically construction. When I say construction, I mean when you're going to draw a figure like this, you're not going to start off with the details. You're not going to start off with the outline and the, the structures and the details. We're going to build things bit by bit. And what we start off with is this, a skeleton, right? But we don't actually literally start off with a skeleton like this. We start off with a skeleton breakdown, and that's what I call construction lines, and a lot of people use them. The reason we use construction lines in a drawing is because if I started off with like, let's say just the details of the eye, brow here and then the nose and all this stuff uh, and add details and we start drawing a face, things can really very quickly get out of proportion from one another because we haven't established how things are going to look in simple form before we add the detail. So when I talk about creating construction work, what I mean specifically is beginning with a construction skeleton and I'm going to show you how I do this. We don't actually start off with a detailed skeleton like the version that we're seeing here. We start off with a really simplified skeleton, right? So I'm just going to drag some lines across so we can see uh, the basic heights and all this stuff. And my task is now to create the geometry of the skeleton in as simple a form as possible with as few lines as possible. So what I do for the head is I break it up into two parts. We have the cranium, which is just a circle, and then we have the jaw, which we kind of add by roughing it in there. And then I add two lines. We have the vertical and horizontal line. The vertical line indicates the direction that the head is facing and the horizontal line indicates the eye level. And so you can see how quickly that took to draw. That was my skull of this skeleton. Pretty easy, right? Next thing is the rib cage here. So as you can see, it's sort of this oval shape. If I was to draw it on top of the skeleton, it would hold that sort of a shape. And if I was to draw uh, a very simple sort of construction skeleton, it would just be that. Uh, sometimes I like to add the convex of the rib cage here just to kind of show the shape and sometimes I add a few indication lines of the direction and the angle of the rib cage. Next is the pelvis. So as you can see the pelvis I just use the same sort of thing. Sometimes I add a direction line but mostly I just go with that and these three areas the head the torso and the pelvis are the largest groups of mass in the human skeleton. So we have the skull, the, the rib cage and the pelvis, they're all quite large in area. Then working from there as we build the construction skeleton, I use a few different shapes. So I tend to add circles for the shoulders because in the end there'll be quite a, an amount of mass there. So I tend to build that up a bit. And then I also work with circles for where the hips start and turn into legs. For the middle of the torso, I usually just go with a line. Some people actually go with another circle in the middle, but it's totally up to preference. And uh, everyone has a different method of going about the construction lines. There is no right or wrong way. It's the means to an end, and you just want to use as reliable a method for your medium as possible. I then add a line for the neck where the, uh, the spine goes, and sometimes I kind of add a little more mass there and start off with a bit of a thicker shape, but otherwise I work with the limbs just like this. I add like a little circle for where the elbow joint will go, work the arms out like this. Then from there, I bring a line down, meet it up to a little joint in the knees, and then a line down to where the legs end up going. And that is my human skeleton. Now I know it seems quite simple, but from here we essentially add chunks and work with shape to build the silhouette. So bit by bit, we're able to see our final result emerge, but it's a bit more of a gradual process. So for example, we start working in the shapes of the shoulders and the arm, 
we roughly block out where the muscle groups will go once you start to learn how the muscle structures are built, but you also don't need to add in the details yet. So you don't need to worry about perfectly aligning the lines indicating muscles or anything like that yet, because we're just kind of adding mass. So we just wanna kind of stay slightly away from our construction work, create a bit of a gap just to show that there's a bit of thickness between the bones and the skin. So we have muscle and then we have fat and all that stuff that kind of adds in layers. And as we can see bit by bit, we're building our silhouette and building the shape of our human. Now, the good thing about this method is that it's really easy to do. And so if you're getting frustrated and you can't quite find the figure or the pose that you're getting to try and nail down, it doesn't matter because it takes so minimal time and effort to create this sketch skeleton that you can very quickly blast out a whole bunch of different trial poses and positions and forms and figures until eventually you find the one that works exactly the way you want it to work. And then when we get to something like the head, we can start roughing the outline, but we're already in a place where when we're sort of happy with how things are looking that we can start adding the details again we don't want to start doing the most intricately shaded features of the face possible as soon as we've finished our sketch skeleton we want to kind of lump things on bit by bit so roughly work with shape and silhouette and all that stuff and then we have our human figure starting to be formed and of course we can kind of move things about and make sure that things are shaped in the right sort of direction but overall as you can see I created a human figure in relatively minimal time so I'm going to move this figure over here just so you can have that example for later if you want to check out this reference file you can download it by using the link in the description and again all these references and a lot more are available in the packs that I've released recently both the ebook and the photo reference pack which uses these figures but I'm just going to on these figures use some construction lines to show you how I might break it down. So I'm going to make these guys a lot more transparent so I can draw on top of them and you can see what I'm drawing. And I'm just going to show you how uh, properly proportionate human figures as in these photos can be broken down into simple shapes and geometry. So here we have the head which we can break down into the two parts. We have the cranium and then the jaw. And because this is a bit of an up angle, the eyes are a bit more like that. Then we have the neck go down and the spine kind of curves along like that. So we position the rib cage around the spine there. We have a positioning line there and then we have the bottom of the rib cage and then the pelvis goes there, right? So you can see how quite easily we're starting to build what our sketch skeleton looks like underneath the actual human form. And we want something that can consistently represent this figure on all different angles. So if you're starting to uh, try and learn how to draw the human figure and you're really getting uh, a lot more difficulty than you think you should have in drawing the human figure on different angles, I really recommend either with photos of human figures or artwork of other artists you really admire the style of, doing this, really bringing down the transparency or even printing it on a piece of paper and with a thicker, bolder color or marker, drawing on top of it and breaking down into really basic geometry. And this will help you understand how these shapes and forms all come together to create the finished result of what you're working on. Now, I will mention a quick note, of course, that males and females are obviously physically very different. So when you're approaching drawing a female or a male, you want to keep in mind that they have different forms and different solidities and all this stuff. So the male uh, tends to be especially in the cliche superhero or hero form, uh, quite solid, quite tall and strong, broad in the shoulders. The female tends to be a little more dainty. So we draw the head the same way, but she's gonna have a bit more of a narrow, smaller, jaw and while we still go about everything in relatively the same way we have a few differences first of all the rib cage is going to be a little more slender and tall and we're going to have more of a convex here and the pelvis is going to be wider so you'll notice that the uh, the female pelvis is wider than the male pelvis that's quite obviously because they are genetically able to reproduce and have babies so what I use as a bit of a key guide is that the width of the pelvis should be the width of the shoulders. Now that can of course vary, There's, there are exceptions to the rule, but it's a good thing to sort of keep in mind. Whereas with the male, as you can see, the width of the shoulders is actually quite a bit wider than the hips. And it's just sort of something to keep in mind. It also gives you somewhere to go in the middle. So you kind of go a bit more narrow and then widen out at the hips again. So two other things to keep in mind when doing your construction work of a female body. First of all, there are these lovely things called breasts, right? 
Now, when we're drawing the construction work of the breast, I tend to use sort of a teardrop shape and work it on top of the rib cage. And uh, there are a couple of things to keep in mind when drawing the breasts. I kind of use a reference line between the shoulders and have the bottom of the breast parallel to that so that we don't have wonky looking breasts. And then of course the other thing is that they're not all just big circles that pop out. They have a weight and a gravity to them. So we're kind of having them hang a little bit. They also merge at the bottom with the, the female chest muscle underneath the breast. So we kind of have this line go out under there. And then the other thing to remember about the female torso is that we dip in here at the middle before we dip out at the sides okay so i'm going to go into more detail in that in the book and in the reference photos you can check out and do all this exercise for yourself because there's quite a lot that you can learn but the most important thing is to do a lot of practice anyways as i've mentioned you go out into your lines by just kind of sketching it out like this and then eventually when we've finished our rough work we can do the final poses from using this simple geometry as a reference anyways that is my tutorial ladies and gentlemen i hope it's been useful as you can see the uh the, the sketch work of the male and female on the right here uh, ends up being extremely simple and you can actually use this simplicity to end up with an amount of detail quite like that Okay, so using construction lines to draw the human figure is one of the most useful things that you can possibly do. People do it in life drawing classes. I know animators and cartoonists do it to make sure that everything is consistent on every angle. Thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to check out the ebook and the reference pack if you're interested in checking out more of that stuff. I've spent a lot of time and work on it. I really hope that you check it out and appreciate it. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel to see new content every week. Check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there. You can get the reference files for this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And if you want the reference files for all the tutorials I've ever made, check out the tutorial archive. If you're looking for a great place to collaborate, explore, or share your own content, head over to newgrounds.com. That's it for now, and until next time, see you later.